1912 by Franz Kafka. The metamorphosis occurs in the early morning hours during the short period of sleep and one's daily mundane routine. Gregor Samsa woke from troubled dreams one morning. He found that he had been transforming his bed into a night. He lay on his back, which was hard as armor, and when he lifted his head a little, he saw his belly, rounded, brown, his numerous legs pitifully thin in comparison to the rest of his skirt flickered helplessly before his eyes. Gregor showed himself slowly to the door, using the chair once there. He let it go and threw himself against the door, holding himself upright against it. The balls of his little feet contained some sticky substance and rested there from his exertions. He prepared to turn the key in the lock with his mouth. Gregor's father sees the chief clerk's walking stick, cuttered up a big newspaper from the table and, stamping his feet, began to drive Gregor back into his room by brandishing the walking stick and the paper. No plea of Gregor's help. The father urged him back, uttering hisses like a savage. A basin stood there, filled with milk, in which little slices of white bread were filled. He didn't at all like the milk. He devoured the cheese, the vegetables, and the gravy. He didn't like the fresh food. He couldn't even endure its smell. They had grown used to it, Gregor's earnings. They accepted the money gratefully, but no particular warm feelings were generated any longer. Only his sister had still remained close to Gregor all the same, and it was a secret plan because she could play the violin soulfully to send her to the conservatory. Gregor would lean against the window. The liberating feeling he always used to experience when looking out the window. With each passing day, his view of things at only a slight distance was becoming increasingly blurry. Gregor realized that the sight of him was still unbearable for her and that she probably had to exercise terrific self-control, not to run away at the sight of even the small portion of his body that protruded below the couch. She ran into the adjoining room to fetch some medicine to revive her mother from her faint. Gregor wanted to help too. He too ran, ran, ran into the adjoining room as if he could give his sister some advice. She got a fright when she turned around. A bottle fell on the floor and broke. A splinter wounded Gregor in the face and some kind of corrosive medicine poured over him. It was an apple. Another flew at him immediately afterward. Gregor stood still in fright to continue running to West Pointes because his father had decided to bombard him. One that flew right after it apple actually penetrated Gregor's back. And yet, the sister was playing beautifully. Gregor crawled a little bit further forward, keeping his head close to the floor, in hopes of making eye contact with her. Was he an animal if music stirred him that way? <laughs> Gregor, attracted by the play, had ventured out a little further and already had his head in the parlor. He was also completely covered with dust. Mr. Samsa! The gentleman in the middle called to his father, in view of the disgusting conditions prevailing in this apartment and family, I am giving up my room, and I will pay a thing for the days I've lived here. We have to try to get rid of it, the sister now said to her father. It got to go, that's the only remedy. He recalled his family with affection and love, then his head voluntarily sank down altogether, and his last breath issued faintly from his nostrils. The life which is unexamined is not worth living. Did Gregor Samsa examine his life? 
Franz Kafka depicts the separation and alienation of modern man. Kafka delineates a distorted world, one of anxiety and bitterness. This disturbing world is reflected in the various novel covers shown below. It is characterized by distortion and is bizarre and outlandish. It uses sardonically humorous effects derived from more than wit or grotesque situations that deal with anxiety, suffering, or death. Tone is often one of resignation, anger, or bitterness. Yes, Kafka was afraid of his father. In a letter of almost 100 pages, Kafka delineates the following points. As a father, you have been too strong for me, and for that, I was much too weak. And from your armchair, you ruled the world. I became completely dumb, cring away from you, hid from you. Your extremely effective rhetorical methods were abuse, threats, irony, spiteful laughter, and self-pity. You have always reproached me either alone or in front of others, since you have no feeling for the humiliation of the latter, and your children's affairs were always public. However, his father never read the letter. Do you note any parallels between this coach and Gregor's relationship with his father? The author used his following theory and principle on his novel, which are expressionism, Surrealism, existential. Expression is expressed through symbolic characters, exaggeration, distortion, nightmarish imagery, and fantasy. Surrealism or superrealism stress the power of the imagination in dreams over conscious control. Existentialism People are created by the experiences they undergo. It is action in making choices that give life meaning. Human beings are free to make their own choices in life. Phrygianism Freud believed that every human action is influenced by the unconscious mind. Early experiences, such as one's relationship with one's father, have a profound effect on the development of the unconscious. Kafka experienced complex relationship with his own father. What does the metamorphosis teach us? Many people find themselves conflicted in this modern age. They are torn between freedom and responsibility to both society and to family. It is within this conflict that guilt often arises, and oftentimes, one's reaction is to escape. Metamorphosis. In us. His books were among the most touching, frightening, and accurate axes ever written.